I'll do ten more. On each end. Well, I've been a physical culturist all my life. I started in when I was 12 years old. And I've been uh, exercising and training ever since. It's a way of life with me. And I'd be doing it whether I were a sculptor or not. But it helps my sculpting. It helps my painting. It helps everything I do because it gives me a margin of strength. Physical activity... There's an old saying, it takes money to make money. And uh, there's a saying, it takes strength to build strength and maintain strength. You must exert your, your muscles and you must teach your body to be able to cope with more than it's called upon to cope with in daily activity. Otherwise, your strength leaves you and pretty soon the effort of living becomes too much. But something is very tiring because physical work, if, especially if you carve marble and you make large, uh, large statues. Uh, there is the, uh, the aspect of uh, physical endurance. Uh, a person, an artist can have all the talent in the world, but if he doesn't have the, the strength, the endurance and the guts to back it up, uh, he's not going to create anything. He's going to sit around and dream about what he would create all the time. But the work of art first takes form in the artist's mind. And then the distance from the mind to the tangible manifestation of that work in this physical world of ours takes a lot of hard work and a lot of sweat. Try a little more. There's a constant challenge to maintain strength and fitness. And without that challenge, uh, well, life would be rather dull, I think. <laughs> With your eyes, look down. Uh, all right. Hold it now. China is my model. Most perfect model I've ever been able to find. I painted her in that's about every role that a movie actress could be in. I've even painted her as a negress. But she's remarkable. She's, she can hold a pose for a tremendous length of time without resting. Turn it more. Not for my yeah. talent and just for my beauty? Huh, that's really, I'm asked that all the time. Mm -hmm. In fact, at a, uh, not too long ago, at a store, a lady comes up to me and she says, you know, she says, I saw you. And I said, you did? Mm -hmm. She says, yes, I saw you at the ceiling of the MGM. She says, how does it feel to be a Nate? to be naked. How, do you, how does your husband like you to see you naked around? I said that I'm not naked. I'm not a centerfold. I'm a piece of art. Now turn your body to the left. Your, more, more, more. 
Out your head, touch your body. Leave your head back. You can't do that, can you? Rest. <laughs> Peter, in striving to create the dimension of depth on a two-dimensional plane, is actually thinking as a sculptor thinks. You must think in terms of a mass in space, a three-dimensional mass occupying space. If he doesn't think this way and feel this way, then his paintings never take on the illusion of depth. not a camera he does not just record literally so the artist employs the elements of exaggeration caricature minimization he minimizes certain things at the expense of other things in order to most effectively what's forcefully make his statement Now, if he doesn't do this, he usually find, winds up with a photographically literal work. I started out, I was... I took a lot of training as an illustrator. And to be an illustrator, you have to be very exacting and accurate. It seems like I've been drawing and painting all my life. I was studying oil painting with a private and private tutor when I was nine years old. I was studying car wood carving when I was ten. And at sixteen I was dissecting with a medical student in a laboratory studying anatomy. So it's been a, a lifetime thing for me. I can't really remember when I, I wasn't drawing. The difference between an artist and the layman 
is that the artist has the ability to capture an experience in stone or paint or music or words and through his work he communicates with other human beings so that they can participate in that experience with him if the observer or the listener has to say what is it then the artist has failed really although there are many who many artists who say if you don't understand my work it's your fault but in reality it's the artist's first job responsibility to communicate to his his audience now the audience doesn't have to agree with him but if he understands what he's saying then he has created a work of art fencing uh, has been a hobby of mine ever since my days in college I'm more or less a maverick my interest has been in the rapier in my mind this is a true sword the true weapon As soon as you get in position, go for that break. Go for this break? No, this one over here. Oh, the act awesome. evolved right, from here. the Dajo dancing right. to a combination right, now go act. For I used to do uh, acrobatic dancing and then finish off with the balancing. And right. for many now years I did this type of thing. And then I conceived of the idea of performing the act with a hazard element, the swords. Good job. Thank you. 
started it, it just, I was projecting fear to the audience and you could see it and you mustn't do that because I feel that he is in such control that he, he knows what he's doing. So therefore, uh, fear has no place in a performance. It probably does subconsciously, right? And when you're through and it's all over, you say, wow, good. <laughs> the inferno the idea was to create a dimensional painting and I'm well on the way to doing that but when it's completed you'll be surrounded by the inferno you will look down into the pit and up into the ceiling of the pit and there will be a third dimension to what would ordinarily be a two-dimensional medium. Of course, I selected the subject because the subject has been with man since the beginning. When he started to feel the first rustlings of a conscience, he started to consider moral concepts and consider right from wrong, good from bad, and in so doing, he reserved a place in the dim recesses of his mind of atonement for his transgressions. The idea of an inferno, a hell, has been with man from the beginning because of this. But still, the idea remains the same a place of atonement for our wrongdoing.
Sorry about that. Pictures of these statues go all over the world, wherever the tourist homes are. Why does it take so long? That's understandable why they should ask that question. But they don't realize that this is made inch by inch. And there are no shortcuts. If I were to stop where it's right now, the statue would remain forever in an unfinished state. And in the final analysis, when I finally put my chisel down and say it's finished, world, the only thing that matters is what the world can see. And how fast or how slowly it was created doesn't mean a thing. Of course, I have the privilege of putting my name on it, but with that goes the responsibility. So that's why I'm quite particular about what I put my name on this thing. for this statue is Gargantua. The great gorilla was Ringling Brothers for many, for many years. Probably the greatest search attraction of all time. And I used to watch him in his cage and I was fascinated by his tremendous strength. He wasn't as large as this, of course, but he was built in his proportion. That's tremendous arms. Didn't have the rotund proportions that most gorillas in captivity attained. He was a real macho man, Gargantua. Well, Dad, what do you think about this one? This is the Sweet Stinks. Winner, the best commercial float ender by Co op Life Insurance Company. All these gladiators here are carrying a the spears, they have the armor on, and the shin guards of the gladiators, and uh, that drummer with the big gentle drum, and they also have makeup on on their faces to give them that hue, and here we come with some more drummers, and some more saber bears, uh, and this thing goes a whole block and a half, Ivan, it's what you call fast, and the Chris a cat Roman Fiesta is his theme, taking off, of course, on the era of way up. I've always liked the pretty girls in the parade, but I've never seen anything like this. This has got the pretty girls in it. It's got every pan. And animals. On this book, it's home of Nature's Heaven in the Animal Training Center north of Hollywood. Four years old, been raised in captivity since eight weeks, recently featured in the movie The Lion. And according to his trainer, this is the first time a lion has been used on a float. He was in the, uh, probably the Benson Hotel here, too. They quite it, too. Hey, look at these, look at these fellas with the muscles. Boy, they were, this is a production, to say the least. These are professional weightlifters and models. Costumes are authentic. But much, much preparation went into this to make it look as authentic and as real as possible. i got to work out more with La Frenzy. <laughs> Watch that whip. He's a real slave driver. There's more of this to come. And still it comes. The Iacoa Life Insurance Company float. Of sweepstakes, best commercial with it. Ivan, this is not just a block and a half long. This right now is stretching out over almost four blocks. And uh, I was just talking to Lee Jenks at the Benson Hotel, and... He said, uh, he, uh, he said, this is like Pasadena. I said, this is more than Pasadena. Pasadena's big parade has never seen anything to compare with this float here. This final float bears Cleopatra, Caesar, fighting gladiators, and our lion we told you about, and crucified criminals. Oh, boy. Rose Festival has to take a back seat to no one. We 
at that line. Line there, so on the way. I'd say the only thing that isn't on this is Liz Taylor. Pretty good reproduction on top. Then we have Rome, you know. They look pretty happy about it. Well, they should be. That lion. 